My name is Anya McCourt and I am currently the International Sales and Marketing Manager for UK, a, a, an independent UK brand called Emily and Finn. We are exhibiting here today at Stand H55 if you want to drop past. Um, I started my career in retail a long time ago and from there moved into wholesale and worked with... Um, Obviously, I'm from Australia, you can hear my accent. I uh, worked with a global Australian brand called One Teaspoon. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. It's a denim brand. Um, and from there, moved into having my own age sales agency and distribution company. Um, had that for about 10 years and at the same time had my own retail store and also had my own uh, little label that I used to sell through my agency. So... After I decided to close all of that down, I decided to relocate to the UK and I've been working with Emily and Finn for nearly the last two years. So my role with Emily and Finn is predominantly to basically find our sales force globally. So um, because of my experience of being an agent, um, my what I focus on is trying to find agents and distributors in the territories that we're getting demand for our brand. So I'm going to have a chat to you about how we find the elusive agents and distributors. Um, at any stage, if anybody's got any questions, please put up your hand. I'm happy to be interrupted. Um, so how do you get their attention? So you're a new, can I have a show of hands who's a new brand, maybe looking for agents and distributors? Cool. So yell out whenever you, put your hand up whenever you have a question. Um, so how do we get their attention? The, the first thing I would say is investing in your, your lookbooks and your imagery. Um, and within the lookbooks and the imagery ab about how you communicate the story of your brand, the, the unique selling point that you have, how you communicate that to these agents and distributors. Um, obviously, a price list as well would be, it would, you would send with the, um, with the initial email, let's say, if you're going to email them. The story is really, really important. My, I've always said that a, a brand that doesn't have a story or a unique selling point that you can't articulate straight away is just a label. And stores pick up and drop labels all the time. But a brand, they will stay loyal to. So it's really important to figure that out. That's what you're communicating and that's how you're going to stand out to these agents. Because that's what they're selling. That's what they're going to stores and they're trying to sell your story. Um, also, I think you need to have an online presence. Whether or not you're actually selling online, it, I, I don't think that matters. It, you just need to have, in, especially in today's digital age, you really need to have a space digitally where you're communicating your story and where people can go. It gives you authority. They know that you're the real deal. Um, Another thing that I would suggest is maybe to try and do some sales yourself. I know a lot of designers don't really, they don't feel like they're, they're good at sales, but actually you're probably the best person to do the selling and to introduce your brand. Um, it's very appealing as an agent when a, a new designer comes to you with say, maybe five or even 10 stockers that they know in their territory and that they can go, okay, well, this is where this brand fits. Um, so I think that that's really important. And, and that brings me to probably investing in some trade shows. If you can, and you've got a territory that you're interested in, for example, if you wanted to obviously grow your sales in France, go and commit, if you can, financially to having a constant present at, at some of the French shows because that's where agents are going to see you. They're there representing their brands. You might not see them as an agency. You might just see them as the brand, but they're there. And if they do see you season after season, they're going to say, hang on a second, we, we really need to look at this brand. Um, Sorry, excuse me. Um, also, I would let the trade show organisers know that that's... Introduce yourselves, get to know them, have a relationship with them. I've met 
so many agents through just through that that way. Um, let them know the territories that you're looking for. I mean, they're dealing with them all the time. Each year they're rebooking them. Let them know I'm looking for a UK agent. I'm looking for a UK distributor, and and they're likely to introduce you. It's it's um, just sharing of information really. Um, Another way that you could meet agents and distributors, there are third party businesses that it is their job, well, it is their business to, uh, to, to basically introduce you. It does cost, there is a fee. Um, I know of one here in the UK who's, who's been around for a long time, his name's Anton Dell. Have a little Google of that and you can see how that works. But basically he will, um, it's his job to know showrooms and agents all over the world. So you can say to him, these are the territories I want and it, it's his job to introduce you. So that's another kind of a good way. Um, and finally, I think... Let UKTI know. They're, I mean, they're such a great resource and they've been such an amazing resource for, for me at Emily and Finn. Um, let them know where, where you want to go outside of the UK in particular. They're, they're, there's, there's a UKTI trade investor in every country at the British Embassy um, that generally spe specialise in fashion and footwear and accessories. So if you let them know, they will definitely help you and when there's trade events that are relevant to you and to the market you're trying to grow in, they, they alert you to that. Um, they, can, they do also do, again, it's, it is a paid service, it's called an OMIS, and your trade advisor will actually go off and research for you the exact stores that you need to be in and do the introductions for you. So it's, that is an amazing resource if you're starting out. I would, I would definitely recommend that. Any questions on any of that? O M I S. It's a brief. It is. I'm sure it's an abbreviation for something. I just. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Um. So if we bring it back just a step, uh, agent versus distributor. Does everybody know the difference? No. Yes. No. Okay. So, an agent basically represents your brand goes out with your sample collection and takes orders on your behalf. They then give you those orders individually so you know all of the stores you're stocked in, you can veto them and say, yes, I love this store or no, I don't want to stock that store. When you, you then make the product and deliver it and when you get paid from that store, you then pay the agent a commission. So that's... This, that's a si kind of a simple explanation for it. Um, but you can see cash flow wise, I mean, obviously you're getting your, um, your product, you're having to pay to get your product made, but you're not paying the agent until you've been paid by the store. The other option is having a distributor. So the, how the distributor different, differs is you, the distributor will, again, take your sample collection, go out, represent, show you to the stores, take orders from individual stores, but what they will then do is give you one bulk order. So a distributor gets a higher discount, uh, sorry, a higher, we'll call it a commission, but they take a, rather than, agents generally work on anywhere from 10 to 15%, depending on, if you're a new brand, I would, I would be expecting to pay 15%. Um, whereas the, with a distributor, they take a discount. Distributors can take anywhere from 25 to 40%, depending on what territory you're in. Um, so the distributor will go out, they'll, they'll take orders individually, but they'll give you one bulk order. So you don't necessarily see all the stores that you're, you're stocked in, although a good distributor will definitely share that information with you. Um, and what will happen is they generally give you a deposit when they give you the order. And then when your product is ready, it gets shipped in bulk to them and they'll generally, for the first couple of seasons at least, they'll generally pay you when the stock's ready. So for a small business starting out, a distributor is a great way to protect your cash flow. Um, and then they distribute it to the individual stores, they chase the money, so it's, it's 
It's great if you're starting out. It's also, um, it's a great option for really big territories that you don't know. So, for, for example, if you wanted to get into America, it's, you know, it's a, a massive territory and you would need lots and lots of agents to cover all the different areas. Um, so, a, a, distri a distributor's deal is, is in my opinion, is, is a, a good way to manage a big territory like that. It's also a great way to manage a big territory. We've got barriers to entry like a language barrier. So you're a UK brand and you're looking to be in Germany and you don't speak any German or you don't have anybody in your office who speaks German. It's a great way for um, you to just manage your business, basically. Uh, does anybody have any questions on that? No. Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we were talking about that at the beginning. So um, there's there's lots of different ways to find them. I mean, we were talking about you know being at trade shows and networking that kind of thing. Um, Google is also <laughs> a, great, a great reference. I've found a lot of agents and distributors just from Googling and looking for showrooms that stock, that, that are representing brands that, you know, we have an adjacency with. Um, trade shows, I mean, and then you, you, you're really emailing them and you're just trying to get their attention and, and calling them and saying, did you get my lookbook? What do you think? Can I get some feedback? Most agents and distributors will be really happy to help new brands. I've found in my experience, they'll offer you information and maybe even know somebody else that they could recommend you to. Um, but it really is networking. Trade shows, trade show organisers, um, you know, going to actual fashion networking events. There's lots in London. I know there's a, um, a company called Fashion Angel. They do heaps of networking events um, and sharing of information. They also to uh, move on to the, my next topic is they also have um, legal representatives who specialise in agent and distributor law. Um, they'll have them do talks f uh, and, and it's, it's free so I would definitely try and attend those if you can. Um, it's really important to, if you do find an agent or a distributor that you want to work with, it's really important to make sure you have a contract with them. This is something that I would, I would definitely invest in because here in Europe, if you don't, you fall under the European directives and I believe uh, that that is derived from French employment law and we, uh, we know that French employment law is renowned for protecting the employee, so the, the European directives really protect the agent. So. If you don't have a contract in place, like it's great when you start with an agent and distribute, everybody's happy and, you know, we all think it's going to go great. But when it doesn't and you want to exit that relationship, it's really important that you have a contract in place that states how that can happen. If you don't, you fall under these European directives and you may have to indemnify the agent for up to five years. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, there have been crazy cases. I know there are two law firms here in London that specialise that I know of. One's called Fox Williams and the other one's called Druces. And I would recommend, as a new brand starting out, that you, you get in touch with these guys and let them help you put your contracts together. Um, there's been crazy cases. Uh, Stephen from Fox Williams was telling me the last time I saw him that an agent in, I think it was Italy, he actually, the, rela the, the, the relationship between the agent and the brand was over because this agent was elderly and he actually died. But his son was then able to come in and claim indemnity for up to five years on the relationship. So even though they'd moved on and put another uh, agent into the territory, they still had to keep paying. <laughs> it's crazy. They still had to keep paying commission or you, you may end up having to pay a huge lump sum, which is, which is you know, tough on your, uh, your financial position. So I would definitely recommend getting, getting legal advice if you, if you do meet an agent or distributor.